Hi everyone, I'm Roseanne with the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Programs, and I'm an enrollment and client journey coach with one of our programs called Project 90. I'm filling in for James. And today we are talking to Catherine Sharp from the Bay Area, and she's a school counselor and teacher. She has just recently completed her journey in Project 90, and I will let her tell you um, where she is in her journey. So welcome, Catherine. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to have you. Thanks for uh, for joining us. I know it's a big uh, leap for some to just share their story, so I always appreciate people um, coming on and uh, and sharing theirs. Tell me, how many days are you alcohol free? So I'm 117 days um, with Project 90, and I actually started a little bit before Project 90 with the five day um, alcohol free. So I'm actually 120 days total. Nice, nice. That's that's a legit four months, isn't it? <laughs> how are you feeling in general? Like, how, tell me where how four months feels. Yeah, it feels really good. Um, I don't know that some people experience a lot of physical changes. I don't know that I experience a ton of physical changes, but it's more mental and the, the feeling that I'm actually, I haven't, I've tried and tried to quit, you know, and I've been able to do like maybe 20 days at the most, but always went back. And so this is kind of the first time that I've actually stuck with it. And, and I feel really proud of myself. And there's been a lot of internal changes, I think more than necessarily outward changes. So tell me what, um, what brought you to the point where you just said, Hey, enough is enough. I, I, I want to quit. I want to, I want to see what an alcohol free life looks like. Well, I think it, it's been a, it's been a long journey. Um, I think I've tried, I've probably tried to quit probably for the last maybe three or four years. Um, I mean, I've heard of people doing dry January or October, dry October or something. And, um, sometimes I've given it up, tried to give it up for Lent and um, found that to be just horrifically awful and very painful and um, not fun. Um, and I've just never been able to do it. And I, when I, when I saw the Facebook five day thing, I just, I don't know, I didn't really even think about it. I just said, I'm doing this. I want to see if I can do it. And there was going to be, and I knew there was going to be support. And I think that was the big key because trying to do it by yourself or even with a family member or friend, it's too easy to say, ah, I had a glass of wine. Sorry, you know. Right, um, right. I knew there would be this accountability, and I think that's what really um, struck me. Well, what were you drinking um, prior to you quitting? Prior? So I, I really love Chardonnay, and I and that's my probably third favorite. My first favorite is champagne, in a cheap champagne, mind you, not expensive champagne. <laughs> so, um, but I loved it, and I could. You know, I would start at like four o'clock and I'd have a glass and then I would think, OK, I'm not going to have any more. But of course, six o'clock, I'd have another glass, seven o'clock, another, gl you know, and I'd, the whole bottle would be gone. And then I would go, doggone it, I wasn't going to drink tonight. And of course, when you drink, you eat. So I would eat chips and whatever else late at night because I was because I didn't like that feeling of kind of, I don't know, feeling kind of woozy or something. So I would I would eat some carbohydrates to kind of fill that in. Um, but my all-time favorite um, are lemon drops and I learned how to make them and I learned how to make them very strong and so you know I, I didn't drink those every night by any means but probably once or maybe sometimes twice a week um, I would get on lemon drops which is vodka and lemons basically and triple sec so it's a lot of alcohol um, if I would go out to dinner it was a lemon drop at least one lemon drop maybe two and a glass of wine Right. Well, you're, I mean, for those, of, those that are just listening on the podcast, you're, you're a fairly petite person. Um, how tall are you? Five, seven. Yeah. One, and, I'm and that, but I could handle, you know, I, but, well, anyway. Um, so that was, those are kind of my drinks of choice. Yeah. But I wouldn't ever, it wouldn't ever be usually just one, it wouldn't just be one lemon drop with dinner. It would be a lemon drop and wine or two glasses of wine. And then I would, if I went out like for a late lunch, let's say, or early dinner, I would drink more. It wouldn't be enough. Right. You know, it usually isn't. Before, when we, when we call to get help, it usually is like, wait a minute, why is it easier <laughs> to stop or um, to just have one? And uh, it's a habit. And, and probably 
um, I've experienced quite a few blackouts where I don't remember. And I find out the next day that I did or said something that wasn't very nice or, you know, and that's pretty scary. I, you know, when I, when you think about it and sometimes, you know, I know the first one I experienced, I was, um, super, I was way too thin and it wasn't that I drank so much, but I completely like blacked out and, and I think even fainted or I don't know, whatever. So it's kind of scary, but I've ha- I would have those, you know, in, in the last 10 years, probably 10 or 15 times. Right. Right. And um, who would tell you about what you did? Well, either my uh, boyfriend or my boyfriend's daughter or if we would be out with friends and it would happen, I would find out, you know, I'd wake up the next day and my boyfriend's mad at me and I have no idea why <laughs> or what I did. <laughs> and then I'm like calling my friend going, what, what did I, she goes, oh my gosh, Kathy, you know, blah, 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 you know. Right. Right. Um, how did that make you feel? Terrible. And I, and that's, I mean, that's one of the joys. The last thing that happened that was kind of not good is we, we, my boyfriend and I both have Can-Ams. They're motorcycles with two wheels in the front and one in back, right? Motorcycles that you can ride. Anyway, um, kind of like quads or whatever. So we went on a big bike ride um, with another couple. And of course, we stopped at bars and drank. And the last place we stopped, of course, I had had wine tasting. What else had I had? Anyway, wine tasting and something else, I think. And then we stopped at this last place. And of course I had to have a lemon drop or two, mm-hmm. I had two, and we have to drive home and it's we're two and a half hours away from home. And little did I know my boyfriend was really mad at me, like for doing like, what the hell are you doing? You know, having another one kind of looking at me like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do what I want, you know, kind of an attitude and, and driving that thing home was really scary. And, and we ended up getting um, separated because I think he was mad and I was whatever I was, you know, when you're drinking, you kind of just don't give a you know, you kind of don't care (laughs) what's going on with (laughs) that was kind of the last, you know, I'm like, that was not comfortable. And I, and I'm so excited to be able to, to now come into summer and be able to ride. And and if we, if we go to bars, we go to bars, I don't even care, but I'm not going to drink and I'm not going to have that experience again. Right. I feel like I can't for myself. What was the, I guess the turning point for you, was it that event or was it you were sick of it talk? Was, well, and then Project 90 was James. Right. His, and, and knowing, you know, knowing that I couldn't, I couldn't do 90 days on my own. I knew I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. And, right. and, oh, and that night, so I talked to him, let's say on one day and I went, I keep it, I've kept the journals for, anyway, for a long time and I, so I went back and because, you know, it's a lot of it's the money. It's the skin in the game kind of thing. And I went back and read my journals the last like two that I've done. And every other page was I want to quit. I need to quit. I need to quit drinking. I need to, you know, my I think my last thing was, OK, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm going to be a big girl and I'm not going to drink on during the week, period. No, I'm not doing it. I'm going to drink just on the weekends. Well, that lasted not even a week. By right. Thursday, I was drinking. So I knew I couldn't do it by myself. And that's kind of a scary place to be, right? You need, and I wasn't, I didn't feel, I mean, I've, I have, I think the big book on my phone with AA, you know, I've, I've contemplated that, but I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm working, I'm, you know, I'm not at the bottom of the barrel and I did not feel comfortable. I've been to an AA meeting and I thought it was kind of cool where you can really, it's like being in church where you can really cuss, you know, I thought it was kind of neat, <laughs> but I, don't feel, I, I, you know, I don't feel like I'm an alcoholic. I don't feel like I need to go to you know, I'm not, I haven't lost everything and I'm at the bottom and I need to do the, you know, I just didn't, and I, I didn't know where to look really. Where is a program that's for people that just have a habit of drinking too much because they're bored. Right. A lot of it's out of boredom or not knowing what to do with myself in the afternoons, you know? Right. And I do want to ask you, I don't, I don't usually ask this to people on the podcast, but I should, you know, this is a fairly significant investment. And as you look, and as an enrollment coach, it's really hard for people to understand the value of that investment but you know given that it was a significant investment for you how do you look at that investment in in the rearview mirror how do you see that i think it was the best investment in myself that i've ever made for a lot of reasons you know alcohol free is one of the big ones but there have been other things along the way that i've gained that you know i it's you know and i still have a you know there's a few times my my little head will go 
maybe you could have done it on your own. Maybe you could have done it on your own, but you know what? I wouldn't have the other things that this program has offered, right? The friendships, the sense of community, the accountability, the, all the other little subgroups that have happened. And, and so I, I, I look at it as the best investment I've made in myself. And, and I, and I never really understood the whole skin in the game thing until, in the, until this realizing that when you, if, if, I mean, if you're a millionaire, right, right, then it's no big deal. But if you're not, you know, this, the amount of money can be a significant thing. And it definitely was to me. And I'm like, I am not going, and I, I'm, I tend to be impulsive and I'll jump on things before I think, right. I'll just, yeah, let's do it. 2000 bucks. Okay, let's go. Or whatever the case may be. And I'm like, that is not going to happen this time. I am not going to be a year from now drinking like I was. And that was a waste of money. I'm not doing it. I'm mm -hmm. not. And so that's been a key motivation for me to keep going and to know and to hear other people's stories and to know that if I were to have one glass of wine tonight, I would have another glass tomorrow and another glass the next day and another. And then it would be two. I'd be right back to where I started. I'm not maybe, you know, I don't know, maybe down the road there's, you know, miraculously I'll change. But I know myself and I've heard from other people that you end up and you end up probably even drinking more if you go back to it. Yeah. yeah, I've heard people do that. I I don't plan on testing the theory. <laughs> but let's get back to um, Project 90 because, of course, I love Project 90 too. And, um, but people, do you see this as a recovery program or do you see this as a coaching program? Like which? I don't see it as a recovery program right. at all. I see it as a people wanting to let go of something that's been hindering them in their life. and what and that's the beauty of, that is the beauty of this program it's it's not just people going okay i'm not going to drink i'm not going to drink it's like okay what do i want to do next what changes do i want to make in my life what what's if i if i'm if i'm able to um get a handle and choose not to drink alcohol what else am i capable of doing and i think that's the huge beauty of this program that it's it's aiming higher not pushing something down if that makes any sense like it's yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so I, yeah. Trying to, and I, I, people who maybe listen to the podcast will hear me say this uh, more than one time, but one of our members, Warren, um, mentioned it and he's like, I felt like I had a parachute and it was deflated. And now that I've gone alcohol free, my parachute is open and it represents energy and ideas and positivity. And <laughs> Would that be a good explanation? <laughs> Very good explanation. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, um, you and other people go through a lot of transitions during Project 90 and um, just in life. And a lot of, a lot of times what we're learning inside Project 90 is that it's not what's happening to us. That's the problem. It's how we're learning to deal with it. And you just made a major life decision yet you're doing so with confidence and looking to the future with um you know positivity and yeah so tell, tell us huh and excitement yeah so tell us about that well I've always I'm I'm the kind of person that doesn't really like to think too far ahead. I'm not one of those that has a 10 year plan, a 20 year plan. I just, I, that overwhelms me. So I've, I've kind of just not really thought it like the thought when people talk about retirement, I just go like this. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. You know, life is going to happen and I'll do what, I don't know. Um, and I think some of that I'm going to keep because I, that's just part of me, but I'm, I, I'm now able to kind of look at life and what is it that I really want? What is, what kind of a future do I want and what am I willing to let go of? And what, a, what do I want to keep in my life with a lot more confidence? You know, I think drinking just kind of dulled my senses, dulled my vision, um, made me feel maybe not very good about myself because I couldn't control it. Um, so I would, if I felt bad about something or if I got in a fight with my boyfriend's daughter or something happened that I didn't like, I would just go get a glass of wine. And maybe it would make me fall asleep, fall asleep and I wouldn't have to think about it or deal with it. Right. Yeah. Actually, another huge thing for you on Project 90 has been relationships. Do you want to share about how your relationships have changed with people yeah. um, um, over the four months? 
I think my, you know, my daughter and my mom will tell me, even though, you know, you don't see the changes in yourself, right? You don't, I don't see it in myself, but my daughter will look at me and it's like, mom, you look just so beautiful or so, you know, uh, you just look different and you look happier. And so she'll, my mom and my daughter will kind of tell me that. But then in my relationship with my um, boyfriend and his daughter who lives with us, or I live with them, I don't know how, however you want to look at it. <laughs> Her and I have butted heads from the very beginning. And, you know, it's hard for a daughter to accept another woman. I, I get it. And, there, you know, she has valid reasons for maybe not liking me or whatever. But we have just butted heads. I mean, huge fights, yelling, screaming, cussing at each other, um, where her dad gets involved and then he's mad at her and yelling at her. It's just been horrid. It's been awful. And a lot of alcohol-induced you know, she'll do, you know, if I've had a few glasses of wine and she does something that pisses me off, um, there it goes. Right. And I don't, I didn't have the clarity to go. That's really petty, Kathy. What are you getting, or Catherine, what are you getting so mad at her for? Like, let it go. It doesn't matter. Right. Um, and so we just fought and I, you know, and I came to the point, this is before project 90, but in, in talking with my daughter and reading books that, that I was, I was coming to her with, with a certain kind of energy and negative energy, I'm sure, right? Every time, you know, I would think about, oh, Nia, you know, Nia's home and, oh, what's going to happen? And what mood is she, what mood is she going to be in? And so I would, I, I know I was bringing an energy that wasn't, I was part of the problem, right? It wasn't just her. And, and I didn't even, you know, I, I, so I joined Project 90 and stopped drinking alcohol. And, and it was like, all of a sudden we get, we get along all of a sudden uh -huh. we get, and I can't explain it. It's one of those things that, you know, I feel like many people got the, they lost weight, they could sleep better, all these physical things. I didn't get that, but I got this, right? This, whatever it is that I'm bringing to that relationship in, in particular is good, right? It's positive and it's, and it is an absolute night and day. And have you asked her, have you, have you asked her? Yeah. What she, not yet. <laughs> I don't know that she thinks deeply enough about me to be able to say, yeah, I'm, you know, she hasn't said anything to me like, wow, we're getting along. It's really weird, you know, and we still have, it's not a hundred, you know, it's not always perfect. We still have our little, you know, little things that will kind of rub each other the wrong way, but it's very short lived over very fast. And it, I'm, it, it's just, a, I, I look at it as a miracle, honestly, it's, mm -hmm. it, you know, and I, the only thing that's changed is I'm not drinking. Right. That's uh, that's the big thing. So you feel a lot calmer. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing I noticed is that yeah. you are less reactive yes. to situations, less apt to take things on yourself because you have more confidence in yourself, right? Just thinking about you know what's going on in the world, if if I. And I'm having a hard enough time with it as it is, right, for a variety of reasons. And if I was drinking, it would be probably more than I could bear, right? I, it, I would not, you know, I'm calmer and I'm able to kind of just, okay, I have those feelings. I have those thoughts about what's happening. Just, okay, that's okay. And let kind of let it go. And I think if I was drinking it away, trying to drink it away, right, this would be a great, you know, I, I, I think people are drinking a lot more right now because it's things are so upside down mm -hmm. and I'm so glad that I'm not you know right. so I can't I, I kind of can't believe it sometimes that I'm not you know rushing to drown out my angry feelings that I have sometimes <laughs> good yeah I um what goes on in the outside world is affects me but it doesn't affect me anymore not like it used to um so your relationship with your boyfriend's changed a little bit too. And you've, I think you've been able to inspire him some. Yeah, he, yeah he stopped, he has stopped drinking January 1st, mainly I think in, in, due to medical issues, right? Being a, like, he's got to stop or he's not going to live very much longer. Um, and he, you know, he was a hard drinker, vodka every night, 12 15 beers. Wow. That, yeah. That's pretty wow. heavy. Very heavy drinker. And 
the good thing about me starting before him is I was, you know, we, we tried this one other time, like he tried to stop drinking like probably a year ago and I was going to not drink with him. Well, I was sneaking off to the restaurant and having my lemon drops and, you know, not able to support him. And so this has been, you know, me kind of taking it, you know, making this decision and choice. And I'm sure it makes it a little easier for him to see that I'm not doing it. The, the, the interesting thing is sometimes I think we think if we stop drinking, it's going to be just right. I kind of thought even with him that it would change. He would change a little more, you know, his, some of his, the way he acts and some of his whatever, but it hasn't. So, you know, and there's a lot of work. He doesn't have the coaching, right? That's, yeah, exactly. He doesn't have that. It's just, you know, and I think so far it's been pretty easy for him because he just made that decision, you know, just like if, when you're hundred percent in, it's pretty easy, but he doesn't have, yeah, he doesn't have the other support, the, the, the nuggets of truth that we get in the, the, and that is that you do. I talk to a lot of people that have been able to go alcohol free for 30 or 60 or six months along uh, a lot of times. And they're like, I didn't get that pop. And I think that's what the, the leverage point is in here. It's like, because we're not allowed to just put drinking to the side. We're like, okay, now what are we going to change? Like now what's our focus going to be now? How do we fill our time? You know, now what are our goals? And it's seeing those wins over that 90 days that allow us to go put everything on the scale. <laughs> like for you, the relationships and um, looking forward and making decisions about um, your future. And um, you had a really difficult decision post 90 that was causing you a lot of stress that you had to process. Do you want to tell us about that? Sure. So I, I got a job this year as a, I'm not a te- I don't have my teaching credential, so I'm not really a teacher, but I got, a, I got, was able to work as a teacher and they were able to give me credit for my counseling days. And so my, I was, I'm making this year more than I've ever made in my life. Um, doing something that's, you know, I enjoy, but I don't love. Right. Um, and so I decided, you know, like I do many things, I'm doing it. I'm just, I'm doing it. I'm going to get my master's and get my teaching credential because I want this job because I like the money. And so I did all that, you know, applied to San Francisco state and got all the stuff that I had to do and, um, got accepted and started the program with not, not really deeply thinking about what, that was going to involve. And is it really my passion? Right. I just, I don't care. I'm, in, I'm doing it because the money's so good. So I started it and I um, was about four weeks in and realizing that I'm not happy at all. I do not, I, I don't, I mean, the, the professors are great. Right. And that, you know, and, and, and it wasn't even that we were on zoom. Cause I kind of liked that. I didn't have to actually drive somewhere to go to class, but <laughs> It just wasn't, and I, it was just agony. And I, and I remember I would, I took notes, you know, I had like a a binder or whatever, and I would take notes and I would go back and I'm like, I don't even remember doing that. I don't remember even taking those notes. What's the matter here? I don't have, I have no interest. I have zero interest in this. I have zero interest in it. What am I going to do? I've already paid for the classes out of my pocket. Um, I'm four weeks in. If I don't do this, I don't have this job next year. So, but I, and I talked to, I reached out to people, reached out to you, reached out to my daughter, another friend, my boyfriend, his daughter. And everybody was just like, Kathy, if, you know, if you're not happy, don't do it. Just don't. You're, you know, I'm not 30 years old, right? Deciding on my career. I'm, you know, closer to retirement. And do I really want to spend the next five years or whatever doing this program or even teaching, even, even this job? I felt such a relief that I don't have to go back next year. I'm like, oh, I don't have to deal with, you know, I don't have to deal with it. And so it was hard. It was a tough decision. And, you know, I shed some tears, which I don't normally do, especially over decisions. Um, But, you know, I was thinking about this. Well, it just popped into my head right now. So tell me, you you know how you you made the decision this time, clear-headed was with solid advice, you're able to think through it, you made the decision, you're relieved, right? And 
tell me about what the future looks like with this decision behind you. How do you feel about making that decision? Well, I felt a lot of relief. The you know the first I think it was I made the decision on a Sunday and dropped everything on Monday. Just boom, told everybody, drop the class, done. Um, and it, you know, if talking to even my dog, you know, just talking to people, feeling a little bit panicked. And I think now I feel a, I'm just whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out a way to make money or get a job or whatever I need to do. We have houses that we, you know, my boyfriend and I both own, we own some property on a lake or up where we have a view of the lake. And, you know, I was thinking if I was working, I wouldn't, you know, it's pretty much going to be he and I building these houses, right? Maybe a little, we'll get maybe a little bit of help, but, you know, if I was going to keep this job, which the money was good enough, you know, to warrant that, but I wouldn't be able to help. And so now I'm maybe, maybe I'm going to end up just helping with the houses and figuring out how to pay the bills, you know, later. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. And that's okay. And I'm okay with that. That's the key. <laughs> yeah. How do you think you would have processed the decision if you were drinking? Do you, what do you, I don't even know if I could have <laughs> done the, done the four weeks of school if I was drinking, honestly, mm -hmm. I don't know. If I, I don't know. You would have, you might have failed, but blamed it on the alcohol and, and yeah. yourself as opposed to a clear minded choice, maybe. Yeah. It's hard to make those choices, you know, it, it, and, and I've kind of, you know, with, with the way the world is, I might not have ever be able to even travel again. So I've kind of just gone, you know what? I don't have to have. I don't know. Money's always been a big deal to me. Like I, I, I want, I don't ever, all of us. <laughs> I would ever, you know, some people want to win the lottery. I've never would I want to win the lottery, but I would like just a, a supply that I don't have to worry about. Right. If I want this, I can buy it. not, you know, but not, I've had, I had a windfall when in my past kind of, and it, and it wasn't even a big windfall and it created a lot of problems. So I wouldn't want people that want to win the lottery have no idea what they're asking for, but I do like to be able to buy things I want, you know, so That's I got to find a way. I think you will. I'm, I'm pretty sure you will. So um, tell me about your experience in Project 90. It has been incredible. It's been incredible. Um, I never, I don't know what I expected. I, I, I knew I needed, I know I needed support, but I didn't know what that was going to look like. I uh, had never heard of Marco Polo, which is one of the, the things used in Project 90, where you can... Oh, you tell people about it, yeah. So okay. Marco Polo is an, an app on your basically on your phone, and you can record yourself talking, leaving a message to somebody, whatever you want to say. You could show them your house. You could take, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, and it goes directly to them or to a group, and they can open it anytime they want. So it, let's say you want to, you know, say I want to talk to my mom and it's 12 o'clock at night. I can Marco Polo her and tell her mom, blah, blah, blah. And she can open that up the next day. And it's, and I've used, you know, learning about it. I've used it with other friends and stuff, but with, within Marco Polo, it's a way for the community. Those, all of us that are trying to go 90 days without drinking, get to tell our story, talk about what's going on. Be, you know, I'm struggling today, or I'm having a great day, or I did this, or this happened, or this triggered me. And, um, and then you have the support of people listening to what you've said and coming on and commenting on that and giving you encouragement and telling you what they did. And it's absolutely life-changing. And of course, me being the stubborn person that I am, it took me, I think I was on day 40 or something before I actually, maybe day 30 um, in the program before I actually got on and did Marco Polo. Cause who, I don't like to look at my face, even on this, you know, it's hard to do these kind of things, but you get used to it. And it, and I've made friends. I've made actual friends that I like, that I, that I want to talk to that, that I could see going to visit, you know, if they, and you're one of them, Roseanne. <laughs> Thank you. And, you are too. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I, I know that I couldn't have done it. I could never have done even 90 days without the community. I couldn't have done it. I mean, beside, you know, the community calls are great and the, and the Kevin calls are you know, the one on, you know, the, the coaching that you get once a week is great, but it's 20, you know, it's not, you're not getting an, you know, two hours of coaching. You're getting just a short. So that the, the Marco Polo time is just, 
I still I call, I call it the secret sauce. Yeah. So did your friendships come when you ventured out uh, to Marco Polo? I'm I'm curious. Yeah. You have to say something because people are listening. And it took, you know, she's I'm saying, she's nodding her head for those of you listening on the podcast. <laughs> so, um, and I'm not one to make, you know, like I was telling Roseanne earlier, I'm not, I don't make friends very easily and very fast. I'm kind of picky about people that I, that I want to call a friend. They ha- there has to be a connection, a, a, an ability to talk about deep things and stuff. Okay. Um, and so, you know, it took a little while with, with some of the people that I, I now consider really good friends, but it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's fabulous. And it, it, it's like a dating app without a date, you know, you're not dating. And, it, <laughs> and I, the w- people that I made friends with are women, but right. it's like, you're making connections with people in Australia and people in the East coast that I would never, ever get to meet. Right. Never. Right. Now we've, we've made this connection and we have this, we're able to kind of look at each other objectively. We don't have that, you know, 20 years of being a friend or, or any, or any uh, preconceived, um, I don't know, biases or, or whatever with that. Sometimes your friends might have, like they might not be able to your friends, good, you know, your close friends that you've had for a long time. It's just a different, it's a different kind of accountability and a, and a different kind of um, relationship, I guess, is what I want to say. That's a little more objective. And you're on this journey. If we've all been doing this together, right? It's right. not my friend saying, well, I can't, well, I don't know why you're doing it. You know, why are you giving up alcohol? You don't drink that much, you know, blah, blah, you know, that kind of thing. You have people that are like, hey, I'm doing this with you. And um, they're looking, the people that you meet are looking to better their lives. And you know, what do they say? If you want to be successful, be around people that are successful, be around people that are, you know, moving and, and changing and growing. Right. And that's going to help you. And that's kind of what I found in Marco Polo. That's what you see. And now you're in Marco Polo uh, almost at or at four months and you're going in there and going, hey, people, <laughs> this works. Stick it out. And you're being the inspiration. So a yeah. lot of a lot of giving back don't you think yeah i really think this it, this program is just very it's it's brilliant it's brilliant it's brilliant what what yeah. has been put together to help people that find themselves not having just one drink every right. the other week you know it's it's gotten to be something that they don't like and they don't want to do and either it's causing health issues or it's causing relationship issues or or just you don't feel good and you don't feel right and you feel kind of you know embarrassed or not embarrassed but if there was one aha moment where 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 would you say you had it it's not a very big aha moment but it's a little aha moment i remember i had i think i had posted maybe once or twice on marco polo just kind of real brief saying this is very uncomfortable i don't really like it and then a few days had gone by and i'd kind of gotten kind of blah just feeling kind of down right and i thought I am going to go, I'm going to listen to that Marco Polo stuff. I'm going to see what's going on. And I'm telling you what, it just was like, oh, I get it. And I, it changed my mood right away. I felt invigorated and excited and happy. And, and it's kind of like, oh, this is what this is all about. This is, this is the purpose of this. And it pulled me. And from then on, at, from that point on, it was, I was listening every day, uh, not necessarily commenting every single solitary day, but it definitely became integrated. It was like a shot of adrenaline, like, oh, wow, this is, I get it now. I finally get it, what this is all about, you know? <laughs> and I think it used to be, be, prior to that, I was, I was, I would get on and I would be like, what are people talking about? Come on, get to the, come on, get to the point, okay? Say it and get off, you know? Kind of a little irritated, kind of. <laughs> and after that, I was like, oh, I get it now. This is, anyway, so that was kind of, you know, my most aha moment. I did have, I remember, I don't know, week three or something. I remember getting on with Kevin on our coaching call and I was like, this is the, I was so, it was like the rainbows, man. I was so excited. My life is changing and this is what it's, oh, I was, you know, I just felt like I had been reborn kind of. (laughs) And that was pretty, that was pretty cool. That was a pretty cool, you don't know, it's hard to keep that feeling, but man, I felt that like, oh, this is so incredible. I felt so good and feel so good. And 
you know. So then you you had that at three weeks, then you didn't feel so good. Then you went on Marco Polo, then you had your light bulb moment. Is that the right? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Kind of what the, what the, I didn't really understand the purpose of Marco Polo in the beginning. I didn't really get it. What's, I didn't really understand it, like what it was supposed to do, I guess. And then that day I was feeling, I remember I was in my sewing room trying to sew and I'm just like, I just feel like crap, man. And then I go, well, I'm going to listen to some, I'm going to get into this Marco Polo. And then it totally changed, you know, then I was like happy and I was like, oh, I, anyway, it just kind of, it all made sense at that point. Yeah, well, and I love your um, your description of first going on and like, come on, what is it that you're trying to say? What is it that you're trying to say? Because that's the impatient part of us. I want it now. I want it now. I want it now. So what what exactly did change for you in that? I want it now. I want it now. Oh, okay. I'm willing to listen. How did that? I don't know. Relationships? I don't know. Because that's where they happened, right? Yeah, I'm thinking of Liz, who I, who's, she's my, I, she's my little soulmate buddy, right? I, I, to me. And I remember in the beginning listening to her and I'd be like, come on, Liz. I, I didn't even know her. And I was just like, she just took forever. I love you, Liz. I love you to death. <laughs> but, and then, you know, I, and I'm kind of like that. I, I have th that tendency sometimes to be quick to judge, right? And then I'm always eating it, you know, because now I just love her to death. I love, you know, I, you know. I don't know what changed. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was about that day. Well, we know we know the result, right? It provided connection. It provided, sounds like it provided patience. Yeah. Um, because when we stop and listen, it does create connection and relationship. Because I find that myself, like Marco Polo paid off, but you can go like one and a half. So you can just make people talk a little faster and, that doesn't mean you're not listening. It just means I, I have little time and I want to make it go faster. But then I'll get to the second one and somebody's comment on it. Wait a minute. I didn't hear that. Right. That's so now right. I have to go back and hear it slow. So it is worth it to hear every per person's story in their time yeah. and see what they're trying to express. And that's, yeah, I call it the secret sauce of, of uh, Project 90. I mean, not everybody has to go through there and and get success, but those that do find that much more <laughs> in, um, in, in success. Yeah, and, I and it was very unexpected. I did not, I had no, never thought like, oh, I'm going to go make friends. This is going to be a way to find friends or this is going to be a way to find a community or never thought of that. And it's such a nice icing on the cake, you know, beautiful, beautiful right. piece of this. And maybe not everybody's going to experience that. I don't know, but I certainly have. So as we kind of try and wind down this conversation, is there anything you'd like people to know about an alcohol-free life or your journey? Or if there's any amount of wisdom you'd like to pass on, what would be the the biggest or smallest nugget because sometimes the smallest nugget can be the most important thing to other people. So what do you, what, what, what wisdom would you like to impart to others as you leave this for a pleasure? But um, I think kind of the, I, I used to think that alcohol was so important in my life and that I couldn't live without it. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't, how do people do it? I would look at people that didn't drink and thought, how boring are you? And uh, <laughs> life, you know, seriously, I would, I'd be like, you're not drinking. What the, you know, what's wrong with you? Are you some prude? Okay. Um, and the, the, I think the thing that I've realized and gotten out of this, it, 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 it really isn't a needed part of life. It doesn't have to be a part of it. It's, it's really a small piece, right? I mean, it's a big piece to us in the past, but it is such a small piece of existence and it doesn't really matter, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, I don't have to judge people whether they drink or whether they don't drink. I don't have to think if a guy doesn't drink beer, he's kind of a pussy, right? Which is what I told Kevin in the very beginning. Um, <laughs> I don't have to think that, right? I don't have to judge people based on that kind of stuff. Right. Um, the other thing that this isn't a, really a nugget, but I've realized like when I go on vacation now, when I, which I haven't yet, but when I do go on vacation, I'm thinking about what do I get to do? 
I want to do stuff. I want to hike and go places and see things. I don't want to just think, ooh, I wonder what kind of alcohol they have in the bar. And maybe <laughs> you know, those all inclusive so we don't have to buy our drinks and we can drink whatever we want, right? Not thinking like that anymore. I want to do things. I want to have excitement and adventure in my life and not have it based around, because when you drink, it's a depressant, right? So it's like, now I just want to go to bed or, I mean, it can, I guess, enlighten you for a little while, but then you crash. Um, and it doesn't have to be, I don't know, once, once you kind of let it go, choose to just say, you know, I don't need that in my life. It becomes, why do I need it in my life? You know, I don't. And now, and it, it is hard as an enrollment coach, as you can imagine, your first day because you don't know what, but it's like you want to bright raise your arms up and go, oh, you know, like okay, bring on the world. Like, I'm ready. I can't wait to go on vacation. Like, think of all the money I'm going to save because I don't have to buy alcohol. I can upgrade now to first class. <laughs> yes. I mean, seriously, it's just, uh, especially when you go out to, you know, go out to eat and I'm not one. I have one friend that's like, okay, what's the cheapest, what's the cheapest wine you have? What's on, you know, what's on uh, whatever the happy hour. I'm like, give me the best wine. Give me the most expensive lemon drop you have. Give me the best tequila, whatever. So I wasn't one to try to save money when I drank. <laughs> so when I would go out, it was not to be. Yeah, I know. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to, I have a, I have an app too that, um, I, I'm almost a year. Yeah. Does your app track, um, how much money you've saved? No, but I, I, I think I can put it in there. I can't remember. Uh, I have saved $7,180. I <laughs> Yeah, well, in a year, yeah, it's like twenty bucks. It's only twenty bucks a day, right? Twenty bucks a day. It is. I but put I, in. Well, well, that's what they they have. Then it, the app is not counting right. But I thought I thought oh, it, right. I just saying I I I mine was more like ten bucks a day. I think. Well, three. It's yeah, I'm, I'm at three hundred and fifty days, so wow. twenty bucks a day. But you're putting in. I, I mean, you have to go out. Your lemon drop costs you a lot of money. You have to add the alcohol in your vacations. That's true. That's true. And in your dinners, not what it costs you at home to make your lemon drop. Right. And I remember going to a concert, and I, we, we my friend and I wanted um, something to drink, and we bought a, probably this big. It was a margarita for twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. <laughs> I once had two makers on the mark on the rocks at a place yeah. and they, they gave me the the bill it was 40 dollars i was like oh god i know it's crazy and i wouldn't care i i wouldn't care now that i've now that i've uh enlightened you that the cost of alcohol includes what you spend when you go out on vacation would, would you adjust your average spending to yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. and my friend my girlfriend and i would go when we would go out to breakfast it was on man and we had my mimosas we would spend a hundred dollars on a breakfast and most yeah. of that was alcohol. okay so you're gonna be up at, i want you to adjust your app yeah i know appropriately for what you really spent on alcohol because there's no way that you're spending ten, you used yeah. to spend ten dollars a day and now you have more money to spend on vacations exactly if i can go on vacation yeah well, in the states i can yeah <laughs> All right, Liz, it has been really fun um, talking to you and you are definitely a lot of fun without alcohol. Um, how do you, just before we sign up, how do you see your future? Do you see your future with any alcohol in it or where you? At this point, I do not, no, no desire. Good. I know it's just a slippery. Well, yeah. And I'll be calling James and you in two years and going, I guess what, I got to, I got to spend another <laughs> whatever the price is because it's going up <laughs> so okay well thank you for joining us Catherine. it's been really fun so we'll see you around soon all right bye thanks for listening to the alcohol free lifestyle podcast i want to load you up with some free stuff right now so if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide i will send you my quit alcohol guide which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. 
You can also text the word quit guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US, but if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word quit guide to the number 44222, or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.